Post these safe practices in a conspicuous place. Be sure that all persons who erect, use, relocate, or dismantle adjustable suspended scaffold systems are fully aware of them. Use them in toolbox safety meetings. Follow all equipment manufacturer's recommendations, as well as all local, provincial, state and federal codes, ordinances, and regulations relating to adjustable suspended scaffold systems. Survey the job site. A competent person shall survey the job site for hazards, such as exposed electrical wires, obstructions, and unguarded roof edges or openings. Inspect all equipment before each use. Never use any equipment that is damaged or defective in any way. Mark it or tag it as damaged or defective and remove it from the job site. Erect and dismantle adjustable suspended scaffold equipment in accordance with design and or manufacturer's recommendations. Do not erect, dismantle, or alter adjustable suspended scaffold systems except under the supervision of a competent person. Do not abuse or misuse adjustable suspended scaffold equipment. Never overload any equipment. Erected adjustable suspended scaffolds are to be inspected regularly by the user to be sure they are maintained in a safe condition. Stop work and report any unsafe condition to your supervisor. Never take chances. If in doubt regarding the safety or use of adjustable suspended scaffolds, consult a qualified person. Never use adjustable suspended scaffold equipment for purposes for which it was not intended. A competent person shall consider stopping work when wind speed exceeds 25 miles per hour for two-point adjustable suspended scaffolds or 20 miles per hour for single-point suspension. If materials on a platform create a sail effect, stopping work at lower wind speeds must be considered. Adjustable suspended scaffold systems are to be installed and used in accordance with the manufacturer's recommended procedures. Adjustable suspended platforms must never be operated near live power lines unless proper precautions are taken. Contact the power service provider for advice. Always utilize fall arrest equipment when working on adjustable suspended scaffolds or when working near unguarded edges. Do not work from, install, or move adjustable suspended scaffolds if you are sick or impaired in any way. Do not work on adjustable suspended scaffolds when under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Debris should not be stored or allowed to accumulate on a platform. Independent adjustable suspended scaffolds are to be positioned so as to avoid overlapping or possible interference from another scaffold. Utilize fall protection equipment when rigging near unguarded edges. Supporting devices must be capable of supporting the hoist rated load with a safety factor of 4. All overhead rigging must be secured from unwanted movement in any direction. Counterweights used with outrigger beams must be of a non-flowable material and must be secured to the beam to prevent accidental displacement. Outrigger beams that do not use counterweights must be installed and secured to the roof structure with bolts or other direct connections. Direct connections shall be evaluated by a competent person. Tie back all transportable rigging devices. Tie back shall be equivalent in strength to the suspension ropes. Install tie backs at right angles to the face of the building and secure them, without slack, to a suitable anchor capable of supporting the hoist rated load with a safety factor of 4. In the event that tie backs cannot be installed at right angles, two tie backs at opposing angles must be used to prevent movement. Rig and use hoisting machines directly under their suspension points to prevent movement or side loading.
Use only wire rope and attachments specified by the hoisting machine manufacturer. Handle wire rope with care. Always use gloves. Coil and uncoil wire rope in accordance with manufacturer's instructions in order to avoid kinking or damage. Assure that the wire rope is long enough to reach the lowest possible landing. Clean and lubricate wire rope in accordance with the wire rope manufacturer's instructions. Inspect wire rope in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. Do not use wire rope that is kinked, birdcaged, corroded, undersized, or damaged in any way. Do not expose wire rope to fire, undue heat, corrosive atmosphere, electricity, chemicals, or damage. Wire ropes used with traction hoists must have prepared ends. Follow hoist manufacturer's recommendations. Use thimbles at all wire rope suspension terminations. Use J-bolt wire rope clamps or swedge fittings. Do not use U-bolt clamps. Tighten the J-bolt wire rope clamps in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Use properly grounded electrical power cords. Protect them with circuit breakers. Use power cords and air hoses of the proper size that are long enough for the application. Power cord and air hose connections must be restrained to prevent separation. Use strain relief devices to attach power cords and air supply hoses to the platform to prevent them from separation. Protect power cords and air hoses from sharp edges. Use ground fault circuit interrupters with power tools. Each person on an adjustable suspended scaffold must be attached to an independent fall arrest system. Each vertical lifeline shall be attached in accordance with manufacturer's instructions to a separate anchorage capable of supporting a minimum of 5,000 pounds or an anchorage designed by a qualified person. Do not wrap lifelines around structural members unless lifelines are protected and a suitable anchorage connection is used. Protect lifelines at sharp corners and edges to prevent chafing. Rig fall arrest systems to minimize freefall. Install vertical lifelines so they hang freely. Use lifelines that are compatible with the rope grab. Install rope grab in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Rope grab must be properly oriented. Keep rope grab positioned above your head. Utilize full body harnesses of the proper size and fit. Utilize shock absorbing lanyard attached to the D-ring at the center of your back, between the shoulder blades. Inspect fall protection anchorage and equipment before each use. Consult the fall protection supplier for inspection procedures. When a secondary wire rope system is used, instead of a vertical lifeline, Attach the lanyard to a horizontal lifeline or an approved platform anchor. Use all equipment and all devices in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Do not overload or modify equipment. Inspect all equipment, including hoists, platform, and rigging before each use. Inspect wire rope before and during use. Use care to prevent damage to equipment. Clean and service equipment regularly. Follow manufacturer's recommendations. Always maintain at least four wraps of wire rope on drum type hoists. Do not connect platforms unless the installation was designed for that purpose. 
Do not move adjustable suspended scaffolds horizontally unless safe work practices are followed. When rigging for another drop, assure sufficient wire rope is available before moving the suspended platform horizontally to the next location. Assure platform is grounded to the structure using a grounding conductor. Insulate wire rope above and below the platform. Insulate wire rope at suspension point and assure wire rope does not contact the structure along its entire length. Prevent the wire rope end from becoming grounded. Insulate each hoist with a protective cover. Insulate tieback wire ropes at the connection points 